So this is the uh, the Hackspace vending machine. We bought this, uh, I believe, off eBay secondhand for about £100. We ran a very successful pledge drive, one of our first pledge drives for it. Uh, and it wasn't it was non-functional. It came without a coin mechanism and there was no way of actually using it. But we thought, we know, we'll, we'll whack an Arduino in it and make it work. Everybody in Hackspace gets hungry. We use it to have food, but also at the same time, people want to buy things, bits and pieces in the Hackspace. So we have lots of electronic kits that people can buy, EL wire, Hackspace passports, and people can also buy tokens here to buy Hackspace t-shirts or cans from the fridge in the kitchen. What it does let us do is it lets us keep track of things and allow members to buy things on tick so that if they haven't got any money here, they can buy stuff and uh, pay for it later on. How's it work then? So when you open it up, it automatically turns itself off with a nice little button up here. And you'll see a nice big mess of wires. The first thing we did was we bought and installed a coin mechanism. The coin mechanism actually cost us more to buy than the vending machine itself because we had to buy it, uh, had to buy it fully working because they're not user serviceable in any way. And that connects to the main vending machine controller, which is in behind this panel here. We thought we'd have to hack into this in some way to get the uh, to get the RFID working, but it actually turns out that the coin mech connects to it on a on a protocol called multi drop bus or MDB, which already knows about cashless devices or RFID cards. So just hang on a minute, tell me how we've got from just buying a coin mech that costs more than a vending machine to, to RFIDs. Well we wanted it to be able to do both, that was the, that was the whole thing, always to be able to do both. So somebody could buy stuff on uh, with, with their cash in their pocket or they could buy stuff with their RFID cards because that's what they could do on the old system where we had literally chocolate on shelves and a, and a pot of money and a board you could write your money on. So we wanted it to be able to do the whole shebang. The coin mech was actually, buying it was controversial because we didn't want to have to buy something, but the end, um, luckily Sanity Wrap won out in the end and we bought, we bought the coin mech and we installed that and got that working. And the, and the vending machine was, in theory, was working, fully working then. You could buy stuff from it fairly easily, but we didn't actually tell anybody at that point. We didn't want it to be used because we were opening up all the time to try and get the cashless device working. So this is our, our vending machine controller and this is the device that operates all the motors in here and makes sure that things vend out properly. We found out from looking at the spec that actually the multi-drop bus can have multiple devices connected to it and already knows about um, cashless devices. So all we had to do was build a device that implemented that specification and connect it up to the, the vending machine. That came with the vending machine, that was all there. And then this is what we've added on. So our cashless device is, uh, is based on an Arduino, really. So we've taken a Nanode, which is actually invented by London Hackspace. It's an Ethernet-enabled Arduino. As well as having the standard Arduino and everything else that you would expect on Arduino and Arduino standard headers, you've got um, an Ethernet device already connected up. First of all, we've now got a connection back to our server. So obviously when, we, when somebody's going to put their RFID card on there, we need to check that they're a member and check to see how much money they've got left on their card. We then built a shield to go on top of that, which implements our RFID. So our RFID is on the outside of the, uh, of the machine. If we close it, we can have a quick look at that. Our RFID is just behind this little nice laser cut piece of wood here. And it's just a nice simple RFID loop. So it's held on by magnets, because um, we, one of the things we didn't want to do was destroy the machine in any way. So if we could take everything out without affecting it. So our shield connects us up to our RFID, but it also connects us up to the multi-drop bus, which is implemented on this little board over here. Now the reason we've had to take it off onto a board is that the multi-drop bus runs on 36 volts. Um, and according to the specification, you have to optically isolate your, the, the, the drop bus from your device to make sure that it doesn't affect the vending machine controller or the vending machine controller doesn't affect your device. So on here, we have a number of optical isolating devices that connect the bus to the Arduino. And our final addition, this was added on a, a later date, so it doesn't require this to work, is a nice little display that just tells you when you hold your RFID card up there, tells you who you are and how much money you spent. Last but not least is an LED indicator that just says whether the card has been scanned. It goes a nice blue colour. So can we see it working? We can indeed. So if we close it back up again and let it reboot. The display shows ready, but normally it always is. We hold our card against there, the light will come on, and it tells us that Daniel, because I've stolen Daniel's card for today, and the reason I've got Daniel's card is because the law of this machine is too great. And I spent all my money for this month, unfortunately. So we pop the card on the machine, type in what we want. So let's have a Twix for Daniel. And it vends out. All done. Fantastic. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. Did there Daniel ever see that? No, that's mine now. <laughs> let's go back into the machine again. So what happens is the 
The vending machine controller is constantly um, polling all the devices that's connected on the multi-drop bus. So that's, in our case, that's just the, the cash machine and the cashless device. In other machines, that might be a note vendor. It could be a, an actual credit card device as well. So it polls them just to see if, it, if they need to do anything. And when you put your card on, our device tells the vending machine that somebody's activated the card and it's ready to go now, it can vend. When you then choose something to vend, so we chose a Twix, the vending machine controller tells us that it wants to buy a Twix and asks if, if, if the person can afford 50p. A normal cashless device, if you bought one, um, would has the money stored on the card, so it authenticates with the card and knows what the balance of the card is and will just reply instantly with how much it can have. Ours is connected to our Hackspace server, Holly, and asks Holly how, what the credit limit on that user is. If they can afford 50p, we'll then let the vending machine know that they can and ask it to vend. And, that, and as you saw, it just vends it out and lets us know that it's vended it. And that's when we deduct the money from the user's balance, or tell Holly, should I say, to deduct the money from the user's balance. The cashless device then goes back into its sleep state and everything goes back to normal. The vending machine goes back to polling um, all the devices again. So the link up with Holly is actually quite interesting. This is part of our, what's called our instrumentation project in the Hackspace. All the various devices in the Hackspace are hooked up to instrument, or Holly in the same way um, through a, a system called MQTT or Mosquito. A Mosquito is a way of sending and receiving broadcast messages across the network really simply. They're on their own separated network, they're not on the main Hackspace network and they all have their own different channels as it were on the, on the Mosquito server. So when, um, when we vended when we're asking to vend, we're asking messages across that system and then we're getting messages back on that system as well. What, what it does mean is that we have certain services that can send and receive messages as well. So when we vend, we also send a message out onto, the, onto Twitter using one of our channels. So we, the vending machine doesn't know how to tweet, but we have a system that doesn't know how to tweet that receives MQTT messages and then tweets whatever, it, whatever it's been told. So, so this, that just tweeted about Twix? It just tweeted can about, we yeah. That? We can indeed. So we've got a, our tweet here. All the chocolate bars are available, but not as nice. Daniel purchased a 50p confectionery. <laughs> so actually, it is actually generic. It is very generic. It, it does say crisps. It says crisps are separate to confectionery, and the electronics are generally fairly labelled. So it's only because um, the chocolate is often moved in and out of different rows, so we, we didn't um, label it, and they're all 50p. Um, it doesn't always tweet. We have turned it off in, in recent weeks because um, people were arguing with it. Um, <laughs> and getting quite angry that it was, that it was telling everybody that they're eating on a regular basis. So we've, uh, we've, we've turned the, the tweet function off now. But it's not, that's not the Twitter as a whole. So uh, Holly, our, um, our server's own Twitter account, tweets on a regular basis about whether the hack space is open and things like that. So it's, all that still works, it's just the vending machine doesn't tweet anymore. We were thinking about getting a second vending machine, uh, a can vending machine with, an, with another cashless device, but we think that might be relatively easy because apparently these vending machine controllers, and this will obviously be my famous last words, these vending machine controllers are fairly standard and it should just be a matter of replicating this and putting it in a new machine. That's the on button. So to test at any point where you've got it open, you have to hold the button in. And we ended up um, having all sorts of devices just stuck down here to hold the button in while we were messing around with things. Um, that was the, the hardest part of it, really. Is that like a safety override? It, it, it's just so, it, it's just so it, it, it turns off when you open the door and it only turns on when you close the door. But obviously we wanted it on so we could test with the door open.